Anything else I can help you with while we're looking this up? So you're saying that the state, the Department of Public Safety has already applied for? No, I, 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 don't, I wouldn't say they have already applied. I don't know where the various departments are in their application process. Part of the challenge is, I say I had a, a discussion with the, the governor's office about probably two months ago now, and they actually went to D.C., and it is, um, it's less than organized, let me just put it that way, Right. as they're trying to work their way through understanding this, this whole process. Right. There's more money in, in the burn JAG grants than there's ever been before. Right. Uh, the problem is that maybe all the all the rules haven't been published and had time for for public comment, and so we don't really know what the ground rules are. Uh, although the the April 30th deadline has already passed for for JAG, so we're kind of in this sort of paradoxical uh, circle that I'm trying to trying to figure my way through here. And I, I I don't think any of us can necessarily figure this out because it it is in such a state of flux in D.C. and I still don't know I haven't had a chance to check have they even promulgated some rules any rules I doubt if it's all the rules so in, until they actually get to this point the states are a little bit in limbo waiting for them to now again I'm sure there may be some programs that are ahead of the curve and some that are behind the curve but I simply cannot tell you which ones. Right, but since J the Burn JAG grant is an existing grant, we we would think that the rules have been promulgated and, I and would, published. I would think. Well, we don't. Ago. Right. What we don't know is is has a change been made, and that's the real question. Did the feds change any of the the rules? And and again, I, maybe in this case because it is an existing program, not that some of these others are not, they possibly may have left the rules alone, but. Right. I'm just speculating, obviously. Right. Well, let's go back to let's go back to our budget, though. For the past two years, we've we've allocated a million dollars in general revenue to this grant fund. I think the first year was one million. I wanted to say the current year, 2009, was more, but I, I do not it, remember. It could be, yeah. And when we when we passed the bill out of the house, we had a million in there for from general revenue to go into the fund. When the Senate passed it, they had a million and a half in federal dollars to go into the fund. Yes. And so the difference between a million and a million and a half is zero. Yes. But we did not we did not exceed the differences uh, in a liberal construction of, of the definition yeah. of exceeding the difference because we were going from two different I don't mean to call you a liberal gentleman. I know that's Thank you. That was I know that makes the hair oh, on wow. your back stand up. Didn't know we had that. Um, but <laughs> In the liberal construction of our rules on exceeding the differences, because they're two different funds, uh, we can still arrive at zero. But that does violate yes. the spirit, I think, of of our intentions to fund the ICCG grant. Yeah, and I, I understand what you're saying. I, I would have to respectfully disagree. And you're right. We, we do every line item, and so it really does go by line item by fund. And it, it's, in the case if it's a zero for them and a zero from us, we can go zero zero. The, both the House and Senate obviously support the program. That's why we funded it. Where we got to is program's good. We support it. How do we? What do we do funding-wise? And again, through the process in the House and the process in the Senate, we were always looking for opportunities to try to fund it. Obviously, not using general revenue. And if there was a a possibility of pulling down federal grants, we said, okay, for the coming year, let's try to take advantage of that federal grant. That way it, it frees up GR and it frees up either budget stabilization or whatever the case may be. And, and we'll use that third option to try to fund this. But rather than a probability, we're dealing with a possibility. And uh, these task forces that have done, I mean, you talk about a great investment of our of our money, these, this million dollars. We've got success stories. The Platte County Task Force has done fantastic things. The one up in Boone County. Uh, Andy Anderson, they've done great things. St. Louis County, Tom Jackson's group, uh, they've got a U.S. attorney, an assistant U.S. attorney assigned just to just to prosecute their cases, and an FBI agent assigned just to adopt their cases. Uh, these are real success stories, and we're talking about uh, a law enforcement task force that's removing some of the most dangerous sexual predators in the state uh, from from. Uh, 
from, from the, the population. From the population. Yeah. Get them yeah. off the street. Get them right. off, get get them off, off the, the internet, actually. Uh, very, the yeah, get them street. off the internet. A lot of these, a lot of the times, these are cases where, where there's been a meeting set up and they do a sting on the, the meeting where the person thinks they're meeting a, a teenager. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to talk yeah, about we, any. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about any appointed officials. Yeah, it's so. not going into details. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to go into any details. But this is how they catch them. This is how they they make a more serious case out of it. And, but it's a great success story for our million dollars. We've gotten, we've really done some good work here oh, in the state. And and I agree. And just to remind you and members of the body, the first time that was funded, it was put into a House bill at this end. Right. The Senate zeroed it out that right. first year. I went to battle to fight for money, and fortunately, I was successful. So, I strongly support the program, and my record says that. And so, what happened is not an indication of the success or what they're doing. It's just can we find a different way to fund it for this one year? Right. But we, by not knowing for sure if the if they if they're going to be eligible for JAG grants or if they've missed the deadline. We've really left these task forces in a lurch. Well, I, I don't disagree that it's something out to work through. And I, w I would say this in public. If for some reason they are not able to get, and again, I'd just be surprised with the amount of money that's being printed in D.C. that the state of Missouri doesn't get something. Right. Uh, given we're looking at $2.2 billion plus, $2.4 billion plus. But I would be more than happy if the governor issues a supplemental to fund this because I'm, again, very supportive of the program. But it's just, if there's another funding source, given the financial times we're in, it's always good to go to that third option, if at all possible. But if if we had funded it at a million dollars in GR, and then the federal money came through, we could we could use that money to supplant the money we had funded and let that that uh, appropriations lapse. Isn't that true? Well, it, that is po that. No, oh, sure. It's it's always possible to take a federal dollar and not spend a GR dollar, or it's also possible to spend both dollars. Right. And if we did this with supplemental, we'd have to wait till January. Is that right? Um, it, it may be possible to do it earlier than that, and since we're coming back in September. Um, but not during veto session. It would have to be a special session that would well, be called concurrent. Can we we can't do supplemental bills and. Veto you know, I'd actually have to look at that because we are in session. We're duly convened. I don't. I had actually to go back and look at the Constitution. I don't know if there's anything that prohibits the governor from issuing a supplemental call at any time. Uh, that's a good question, but I do not know the answer. Right, but we because we, we actually have done. If you remember, was it last year or year before where Governor Blunt ago. calls into kind of special session right, right around special session for Eco Devo right. to to run that bill. Right, but it, it took. It took that special call. We couldn't do that as a matter of course no, during you, no, a veto session. Right. No, the, it's okay. up to the governor to make that determination as to when and what the the special session will be about and then to issue the call for the supplemental. Well, let, let me let me go back to what you said. You have gone to bat. I mean, every year we've had to fight for this money, and I want to give you a lot of credit. You've gone to bat uh, and, and fought for these task forces to get their funding back. Uh, and that's why it was such a shock to me this year when I saw that, that line gone from the the supplement or the uh, conference committee report, uh, and and my phone started ringing as soon as you guys uh, closed eight. So I, I heard about it right away, and this is is something that I've always fought for as well. So uh, I don't want to take the chance that these guys have lapsed funding. So I'm going to offer substitute motion, gentlemen, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, gentleman from Jefferson, I, I've got a substitute mo motion I'd like to send forward. Send it forward. Gentlemen, state your motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The uh, the motion is uh, at the dais. The motion would be that the House refuse uh, to adopt conference committee report for Senate committee substitute for House committee substitute for House Bill 8 and grant further uh, conference thereon and that the House conferees be bound to the House position with regard to sections 8.040 and 8.045 with regards to the cybercrime investigation fund. And Mr. Speaker, if I can have five members standing, I'd like to have a, a roll call vote on this. Gentlemen, it's not timely. I will give you time to do that at the right time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.